Okay, in this video, we will look at or investigate the CSS ID selector. In previous videos, we looked at the element selector, and then we looked at the class selector, and we will look at the ID selector in this video. Uh, it's pretty simple, and so hopefully this will be a rather short video. Let's jump right into PuTTY and see what we've got going on there. I have a copy of the same file that I was using before. Um, uh, and, and, and so we see the same format, right? I've got my HTML document, the head and the body. Inside the head, I have a title. And I'm working with the style element here, right? This is my CSS, my style sheet, really. It's contained in the document, but it's here, nonetheless, in the head, so I'm speaking to the browser, right? We see we have an ID, I'm sorry, we have a an element level um, selector here at the moment, right? From our, the first example, P, it selects all paragraphs in the document, right? And we know that we could do something like we saw in the last video, something like this, up a little bit something like this to create uh, to begin creating a rule for cl uh, the class the dot does class it says any element in the HTML in the body portion of this document that is a member of the class inset should have the following rules All right, so um, what I can do is we'll use that trick that we did in the previous video and do control K and control U right there put it right back and then come on down and do a U here All right so that and I feel this looks better it won't matter to the browser but I feel it looks better if we place that in a little bit all right, looks better for a human. All right, so that was element, this one, element selector. So it, and when we say the, when I say the word element, what I'm talking about is HTML element called P in this case that lives in the body of this HTML document. Here uh, is a, a, how I specify a class name. So any HTML element that is a member of this class should be styled like this. All right, and I believe what we did was in the previous video, I can't use that, let's go here. I think we said in order to distinguish, we made it white. Um, we don't want to use white because that's going to be the background. Yellow, we use yellow. All right, so now we, we could tell the difference if somebody, if, if something was was uh, different between them. And then we just came down to the paragraph and we made some paragraph element here. We, I just chose paragraph. I could choose any element I want because the class is broad enough that it, it will apply to any element. I'm just choosing paragraph in this case. And C-L-A-S-S equals quote, quote, right? so I don't forget those quotes, and then I'll back up and I'll say in, uh, inset is the name of the class, right? So now I have assigned this element, this particular element, to the class inset. So this class rule will apply to that particular element, All right? And so we saw how that worked before. For ID level, what I'm going to do is simply, to make this happen, is simply change this to a pound sign. So now we're, I'm specifying in the CSS that this is an ID element. And I'll come down here and I will say in this paragraph, instead of class equals inset, ID equals inset. There it is, it's done. Control O, 
enter. And so it, at this level, it seems like it's the same, right? It seems like we're doing nothing different than we did with class. Um, and I'll try to explain what the difference is, but we'll look. There's my browser. Uh, oh, there's some things I wanted to mention here, but let's let's quick look at this, and then I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, let me get my browser open. All right. So it's um, ID selector that we want to look at. Well, the text is white under there, and you know we don't really like that, but it, <laughs> that's what we got from it. From it. Anyway, we see the background is yellow, um, so I would need to correct that white that we see there. Um, let's go back and finish our discussion with, um, actually I should have done this the proper way, would have been to, we, we did the uh, ID selector, and then I should have clicked that one, right, to show you that my links are working, There's, they're not broken. And that's how your links should work. <laughs> they shouldn't say file not found. Um, so let's go ahead and finish the discussion about why we would use this since it looks an awful lot like it's um, the same thing as a class selector, but it's not actually. Uh, well, we see the format's different, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying here class equals. So there's something different. There's some reason. Uh, the, th the thing about the ID level is that there can only be one ID. They're, they're very unique. So I, I can't have multiple HTML elements in the document that all have the same ID. It, it, only one element can have a particular ID. So it's very, very fine grained. It only, this rule only applies to one element, specifically one. And, and it can't be applied to any other. So um, a lot of times this particular selector would be used in a form, right? So where, where there are individual items in the line items in the form might be last name, first name, um, it could be amount or something like that. They're, they're very unique in the document. So we wanna use uh, an ID level selector when we're selecting something that is unique, right? Like the word ID implies, right? Your ID is unique to you and ID will be unique to a particular element. So now in, in this example that I have, no other element can have the ID inset, only this one. So I'm referring to one specific element so only this element can have uh, the background yellow. But notice what's interesting is that paragraph still applies. The color is still white. The font color is still white. But the background, which is the only thing I set in this one, I mean, it is a paragraph element. So the paragraph, the very general rule here for paragraphs will apply, but the more specific CSS rule here will override the, the more general rule, right? So we see the background color does get changed, but the, the, the more general rule still applies unless I changed it here. If I changed it here, then it would uh, no longer the white would not happen for font color. All right, so that's the only thing that we're really using um, ID style for the selector, ID selector. So um, I think what we should do real quick, I think that's pretty straightforward, no big deal on that. If you understand class, then you understand this one. It's just very, it's much more specific uh, about the element that it's, that it's um, um, selecting. It's a unique element. That's that's what really is it sets it apart. It's that it's unique. Uh, the class selector seems to be the broad, you, the, the most options. You can apply across elements and to specific groups of elements. You can group elements together with it. Um, uh, the, the element selector seems to be 
just kind of the simplest way to go, but it, remember it hits everything. So there's, if you're using element selector level uh, on, on these uh, elements, then you're, you don't really have a whole lot of options <laughs> uh, on how you're going to be spe more specific and you can't cross uh, elements either with it. It's just, if we use the P element um, uh, selector, then it's only going to be P's and it's going to be all of them. So it's really kind of limiting. Class seems to be the most flexible. Doesn't mean that element isn't useful, right? And then ID is the most specific. If you're trying to be very specific about the particular element that you're working with. So that's kind of how the, the three methods work uh, and, and how to get them incorporated into your code. Uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to take a peek at is I, I, I fixed up my page. I said I was going to do that on the last one. It, it was only took a couple seconds, so I, I quickly did it. So let's jump back on that one and show um, what I did to clean up that index, the Sys101 index page that I have. So I'm going to jump back to the browser here. This is the particular page I'm talking about. So you'll recall from the last video that my links here, in, in particular, I think it was these, it's all these uh, CSS example links, these. Uh, uh, these three, they were all jammed up on one line, right? Because I didn't have BRs after them. And so, uh, but I did have a BR above this one. So it, 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 there was a line break there and then these three were jammed together and then and then we have a line break and then this one. So what I could choose to do, what I chose to do here was put all of these elements into an, uh, these into an unordered list. And so then I didn't need any bricks because a list has a line break naturally, right? A list item does. I'll show the code in a sec. And then I, I did not put this one into the unordered list because I wanted it, to, it's it's different, right? There's something different about it. This goes back to the home page. This is a list of links to examples that I've created. All right, let's take a peek at the code. All right, and so you should be able to do that too. View source code. This is the code that the browser received from the server. Uh, I can't, obviously I can't modify this or anything because this is my copy uh, of the code. Uh, if I want to change the underlying code, I have to go to the server to change that. That's where the original lives. The original, this code originally lives, does live on Copeland, not on my machine in my browser, right? This is just my copy. But this is the code that it received. This is the copy that it received. So all I really had to do to correct the problem that I had was create an unordered list here, right? And so then each unordered list or ordered list I just didn't care to have one, two, three, four. You know, maybe it does have meaning though for, for this list to be ordered because they, they are kind of in order. So maybe an ordered list would be appropriate. I just think it would look funny to have one, two, three, four over on the side. And so I, I, while I think there's meaning to the order of these, I don't think that they should be numbered in any sort of way. So I wanted to use an unordered list. So whether you're using an unordered list or an ordered list, the individual list items start with, there's, there's, these are sets of elements here, list item elements. So it opens with a, an LI, a list item, and closes with a close LI, right? So that's the end of this list item. Now the content is this part. Up to there, right there. So all I've done is I just used for my content, instead of text, plain text, I used another element. So we're back to this notion of nesting elements. So I, I have an anchor element that's nested inside of the list item element, which is in turn nested inside of the unordered list, which is in turn nested inside of the body, which is in turn nested inside of the HTML. So this parent-child analogy that I've been talking about throughout the class, con it continues throughout computer science completely and, and all throughout um, HTML. So that I could, if I wanted here, 
I'm not going to do it, but if I had images that would make sense and I wanted them to be clickable and rather than have this text here, clickable link text, then I, I, could, I could embed there an image element, right? Instead of using the plain text. And then I would have a, a, a picture, a picture here that I would click instead of the text. So I would have this as a child, this image, if I, if I had an image there, then that image element would be a child of the list item. Or it's a child of the anchor element which is in turn a child of the list item, which is in turn a child of the UL, in turn a child of the body. So as you see, as I'm coming out of this, I'm kind of going up a level and up a level and up a level. And so this is the same way your Unix uh, directory structure is working. When we do CD space dot dot, we're going up a level. We're coming up from the, up to the parent. In that case, in Unix, we're talking about um, folders, right? So the parent folder is, is one up. <laughs> so the nesting is folder inside a folder inside a folder and when we're talking about Unix. But it's the same concept, right? And so the ch children live inside <laughs> of, of some other folder. It's a child folder inside of some other folder. We want to move up, up, up through those folders. We, in, in HTML, we're moving up, out, 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 or up, up, up through elements that are also in turn nested. So I think that's all I've got for you for this video. That's a quick one and it reviewed some other things uh, that we ha are, have been working with. So I'd say we're probably finished with this one. It was a quick one. Let me know if it doesn't work out for you or if you have any questions. That's gonna do it.